multiple unit train sets are the preferred commuter and long distance trains and a variety of designs exist across the world. Traction power in these trains could be diesel or, or electric power supplied through overhead catenaries or through a third and as in London even a fourth rail. Unlike locomotive haul trains where traction power is localized in a locomotive that hauls several trailer cars, a multiple unit train has no separate locomotive but rather the entire train set functions as a locomotive. I will make this clear in a moment. In a multiple unit train set, traction power is transferred to traction motors that are distributed across several cars in the train set. While this makes a separate locomotive redundant, it also allows quicker acceleration. It also results in a faster turnaround times at terminal stations as the time taken to reverse a locomotive is eliminated. Apart from the differences, transfer of traction power to the wheels in a multiple unit train set is similar to that of a locomotive. Power collected from the pantograph is transferred to a traction transformer which sets the desired voltage. Power at the desired voltage is then passed through main and auxiliary traction converters. The traction converters convert the power to the type required by the traction motors such as from AC to DC or single phase to three phase. The main traction converter transmit power to the traction motors and the auxiliary converter transfers power for hotel equipment such as lighting, fans and air conditioning inside the cars. In a diesel electric multiple unit, power is provided by a diesel engine which is converted to electric power by alternators. From here on, traction is as in an electric multiple unit. Trains are heavy vehicles and require long distances to come to a halt. Therefore, to maintain safe stopping distances between trains, signaling systems are required. At the very basic of signaling, the railway route is divided into a series of blocks. An electrical circuit running as a relay between the blocks informs the block ahead about the presence of a train. When a train enters a block, Contact of the wheels with the track circuit causes a short circuit. This break in current indicates that a train has entered the block and the signal is turned on. No other train can enter the block now. When the train exits the block, a second short circuit indicates that the block is now empty and safe for the next train. A series of blocks manage train traffic on the route. These could be manual or automated. As the train enters the first block, the signal is turned on. The block is now closed for other trains. As the train exits the first block, the signal aspect changes to caution, indicating that the next train can enter the block, but it must proceed with caution at slow speed and be prepared to stop. When the train exits the second block, the aspect at the first signal turns green to allow entry of the following train at maximum permitted speed. In denser traffic, the number of signal aspects may be increased. Modern railway systems use automated traffic signaling. Sensors placed along the track, usually 300 to 400 meters apart, communicate with sensors and the train cars. The automatic train signaling system uses ground sensors placed some distance before the signal. If a train passes a sensor when the signal aspect is stopped, an alarm is sent immediately to the driver regardless of the train speed. If the driver does not stop within 5 seconds after the alarm is received, emergency brakes are applied to automatically stop the train. Emergency brakes are not applied if the driver acknowledges the alarm and applies the brakes himself. Here is signaling in real time. As the train enters the block, the signal aspect is turned on, indicating that no other train can now enter this block. When the train moves out of the block, the signal aspect turns to green, indicating that the next train can now safely enter the block. 